with the video, we're going to be going over the 40s PJ2 Plus comm radio here in the airplane. I'm just going to do a quick audio introduction here because when I plug in the microphone and headset to this, you will not hear any of my audio unless I transmit. So we'll get to that here shortly. I'm on the ground at the moment. We're about ready to go over to where we're going to do the run up. I'll connect to this and we'll go from there, okay? What I'm going to do right now is unplug my microphone and headset. And Headset jack and plug them into this radio here. We'll do a quick test here and just see how good it is with transmitting. Any Metro traffic, Skyhawk 9744 Delta taxiing to runway 33, Indy Metro. So we're about ready to do takeoff here. I've got the microphone back here and plugged into the audio source here because the, this gets enough power to power up the microphone cable, and you only get your microphone audio if you transmit here. Obviously, I don't want to transmit all of this introduction over the airwaves. So we're going to go take a lap in the landing pattern at 1,800 feet here at Uniform Mike Papa Airport, and we're going to do it all from here and see how it goes and see how I like it. Good job, big guys. Okay, one thing was be clear, C3. Indy Metro traffic, Skyhawk 9744 Delta departing runway 33, Indy Metro. Traffic Scout 737 Juliet, left base for runway 1 Greenwood. Here with Traffic Scout 737 Juliet, short final for 1 Greenwood. Indy Metro Traffic Skyhawk 9744 Delta turning left crosswind, runway 33, Indy Metro. Indy Metro Traffic Skyhawk 9744 Delta turning left downwind, runway 33, Indy Metro. Indy Metro traffic, Skyhawk 9744 Delta turning left to base, runway 33, Indy Metro. Indy Metro traffic, Skyhawk 9744 Delta turning final, runway 33, Indy Metro. Indy Metro traffic, Skyhawk 9744 Delta, clear of runway 33, Indy Metro. All right, well, that was pretty good. Let me uh, clear the runway here after landing checklist and go back over to do another landing here. So then we'll talk quickly about the radio. The radio was pretty neat, I think. Uh, that was the first time I was able to transmit legally on it. And I thought everything sounded good. The issue, I think, is maybe a lot of static or noise that I pick up on. I had to keep adjusting some of the squelch, but I also didn't want to cut out a lot of the other in incoming receiving messages. So that might be a pain that you have to uh, worry about, I guess, if you're getting a lot of static and noise in your headset from that radio when you're here up in the air. Maybe, you know, you got a lot of these electronics going on that is causing all of that. So anyway, that PJ2 Plus radio, right now I'm pretty happy with it. There's a couple of things that I think could improve. For example, the screen, no matter how bright I have it on, I cannot really see anything with sunglasses on. And these are non-polarized sunglasses. And if I hold the radio up vertically like this, I can't see anything. But if I hold it sideways, I can. So it's weird because it's like, hold on one second. Andy Metro, Private Skyhawk 9744 Delta turning left downwind, runway 33, Andy Metro. All right, we'll do our turn here. So I believe that the screen then is polarized, kind of like sometimes you have your, uh, on your, your displays inside your cockpit maybe are already polarized, so you don't really need the glasses, the uh, polarized glasses. 
But these glasses that I'm wearing are not polarized, so that's a pain in the butt. I have to hold the radio a little bit sideways or kind of look underneath here just to look at the screen. What I also really like about this radio is that there's this button right here, the top button on the side, which goes to your last frequency. So I have right now the weather and then the communications, but you can also set that up to however you need to in order to get your radio frequencies quickly. All right, we're in the landing phase here, so I'm going to stop talking. We'll talk about the rest of the radio later on. Okay, other than that, I think the radio is a really good backup radio here. The buttons are super large. I mean, the whole thing is pretty big and bulky, but it, it feels like you know a good break. It's not really going to fall out of your hands. You don't have to worry about breaking anything. The buttons are very easy to access and push. You get a really good tactile feel, I think, especially when the button clicks. And then also, if you read the manual, you get a few more extra settings by using this clear function here and a number. You're able to change a lot of the settings as far as, oh, we got the radio going off. You can change a lot of the settings as far as your keypad tone, your lock functions, your brightness settings, and things like that. And by the way, going back to the screen, even if you hit this bottom left, this far bottom button, it's the illumination button. Push that, and that's supposed to also give you some brightness, but it's uh, not working as far as being able to see it through sunglasses. So keep that in mind. I think Sporties could improve the screen somehow there where you can see it through your sunglasses. But the radio in general, I'm satisfied with the purchase. I got it on sale a little bit during one of the uh, holiday sales, so I didn't pay ex the extreme amount of full price there, which I think it could be a little bit maybe, um, I don't know, overpriced compared to like other radios. I'm in the ham and GMRS, and you can get a lot of good decent radios that maybe do a little bit more and have a lot more functions and things like that for cheaper. But obviously, this is not a ham or GMRS radio. Uh, but what I really like and the options here is that you can put in your headset and also if you don't want to do that, you can also put this normal 3.5 millimeter jack earphones or headphones into here. Obviously the radio is quite simple because in an emergency you don't want to be fumbling around with a lot of mop, uh, menu options or buttons or controls like that. So that's one primary reason why I bought this. It, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. I think the antenna has a really good range, a really good reception and things like that. We're going to check it, by the way, on the SWR reader and also check um, also what the power outage is, power transmission with full batteries because I got uh, full battery so far in here and I use the Energizer lithium batteries. I think also the Duracell Optimum is a really good choice as well for batteries for this. I did a battery test. You can check that rate, that video out later. But anyway, enough talking in the airplane with the radio. Go get yourself one. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. And it's just really cool to use. Okay, so really quick, here we go. I do have the screen inverted to these colors, by the way, but the brightnesses and contrasts are set perfectly. Go ahead and turn that down a little bit. All right, so as you can see, you can see clearly the screen either in this formation or this way, right? Now, if we put the sunglasses on it, here we go. You can just barely make out what it says on the screen, right? So let's rotate it this way. And you can see what I'm talking about. If the screen is rotated sideways or horizontal here, looking at it from this direction, you can see it perfectly fine. See? So I'm not sure what's going on with the screen. I'm thinking it's polarized in a way where the light comes through it in a certain way, and that prevents you from being able to see the screen when you're wearing sunglasses and you're holding it straight up and down like this. All right, so we're about ready to check the power on this bad boy, the PJ2 Plus here. And in the manual, I've been doing some reading here just to kind of understand how this thing is supposed to be working. Here on the last page in the manual here, it talks about the transmitter and the transmitter power. It says you should be at 1.8 watts plus or minus 20% and 6 watts PEP at 85% modulation. So we're gonna test that and see if that's what we get, this 1.8 watts. I don't have a PEP wattage meter at the moment unfortunately so can't really check all of that but we'll be able to check to see what this value is here within and hopefully it's within the 20 percent plus or minus but also you have to pay attention to which kind of power are you using are you using batteries or are you using a usb-c power bank let's double check here what it says about that so if we go to page 21 here for transmitting here in this paragraph, it kind of talks about some of the power again. So it says the PJ2 Plus Com will transmit at six watts PEP 
when using the alkaline battery pack or the optional lithium ion battery pack. If you're using the Type-C power port, the PJ2 Plus COM will transmit at five watts PEP. Oh, and then up here, it also explains a little bit more of what I was trying to say in the cockpit to you guys here. If a headset is used, the PJ2 Plus COM's internal microphone will be deactivated and the microphone on the headset may be activated by pressing the PJ2 Plus COM's PTT button, which is the push to talk button here on the radio or by pressing an inline remote PTT. So if you had an inline one that you could just push, it's like an external one that you could push while your headset is connected here, you could get the microphone to go. All right, so we're ready for the test here. We're gonna explain a little bit here, okay? I took the antenna off and here we have what's called the Surecom SW-102. It can measure SWR and your power output. And then we have a 50 ohm dummy load on here so that I'm not transmitting signals throughout the airwaves during this test. If you had the antenna on, then you could be measuring the SWR, which I already did and I'll talk about that later. But if you have that antenna on, you're gonna be sending out signals throughout the airwaves. So the way this works is we're gonna turn these both on and we're gonna test at a few different frequency ranges. We'll start at the high end, 137.000. And this is on battery power. All right, so right here is where we're gonna be looking. Right now it says 0, 0.00 watts. With the big numbers that are gonna show up here is the SWR. We won't pay attention to that because we have this dummy load on it. All right, so here we go. We're on 137. We've got full battery here. TX transmitting. And what do we see here? I see 1.74 watts between plus or minus 0 0.02. Let's go to 135 frequency. Try the test again. One point seven zero. Let's change frequency to one three zero. Do an in increments of five here. Okay, one three zero zero. 1.66 was around 1.70 there earlier. Okay, one, two, five, zero, zero, zero. And let's see what we got here. 1.59, 1. 1. 1.58, 1.6, somewhere around there. One, two, zero, zero, zero. And that one is at 1.5. Two, and then one one eight zero zero, which is the lowest frequency you can go on airband. And there we go, one point five, one point four, one point four seven. It looks like one point four seven, one point four eight. So if you noticed, the power started dropping between 1.37 as you went lower in the frequency. So here we are, 137 frequency here. And we're at 1.73, right? If we go real quick to 118, we drop 0.2 to 0.3 watts of power. So that's quite interesting. It's not a lot. You're not gonna notice it, I guess. But if we go back to the manual here, you should be at 1.8 watts plus or minus 20%. I did not see the 1.8 watts. These are more or less fresh batteries. I just barely used it in the cockpit the other day. So it's interesting we didn't get up to that amount of wattage, by the way, but we are within the 20% actually. So I did all the tests with just the battery. Let's go ahead and try using a battery power bank, doing all the tests. Make sure you have one that at least can put out 2.4 amps. We're gonna use the QC 3.0 because that puts out enough amperage there. We're going to plug it in now to the unit right here, the USB-C. You can see that it automatically has the charging, USB charging icon here in the top right instead of your battery. And we're gonna do the same test here. So we're at 118. And we even have less power, 1.08 watts. And since we know that we lose wattage when we go down from 137, let's just do a couple of these here. 137 
violate. And we are at 1.58, which is basically where we were at when we were on the lower spectrum with just the batteries at around 120 frequency. So 135. 135 frequency gets me 1.44. 13000. We've got 1.19. 12500. 1.15. 120. 120000. How many zeros are in there? And that's at 1.08. Okay, so that's the test with a backup power bank. So if you ever need to use this emergency radio with a backup power bank, just be aware that you are gonna lose some power and maybe a little bit of range, okay? So now let's check the actual plugging into a USB-C wall outlet, which came from Sporties, by the way, this neat little doohickey here, which is the appropriate one to use if they're sending it to you. And make sure you use a proper cable, which they sent as well. So now let's do the same test. This is the third test now. We're testing the battery, this double A batteries, by the way, the backup power bank. And now we're going to test the actual wall outlet. So we'll start again and you still see the USB icon there. And we'll go ahead and start with 118 again. So here you get 1.07 and we'll go to 137 megahertz. 1.50 more or less. 135. 1.43. 1.3000. 1.18. And if you're at 125 on the frequency there, 1.16. And the reason you, I do this is because usually there's a little bit of a sweet spot of where the peak output power can be given the certain frequencies. So here at 120, we're at 1.07 watts of power. Okay, there you have it. Just to do some more explanation here of using a USB-C power. Here you can see on page eight in the manual, the external power discussion. You need to have at least a two point amp power supply here, either with your backup power bank or the wall outlet, because if not, you won't have enough power to transmit. So if you have less than 2.4 amps, you won't have enough power to transmit. And if you're attempting to transmit on less than 2.4 amps, the PJ2 Plus comm screen will interme intermittently flash and beep. And so obviously you need to go back to the alkaline battery pack or somehow get 2.4 amps through your battery. And then really cool here down at the, at the bottom in the notes, when powering the PJ2 Plus comm through the USB type C power port on the side of the radio, the radio will transmit at five watts PEP. So that's why you noticed in my testing here that you were getting even lower wattage on your transmission power, switching from the alkaline batteries, the six AA batteries that you have in here and switching it to the USB-C power. So keep that in mind if you're ever looking to make sure that you wanna have the maximum amount of power. And obviously before you go for any flights, just make sure you have fresh batteries with you. It never hurts. And these batteries do seem to last a while. I've been using it a little bit here and there on these Energizer Lithium AA batteries and it's still got a full charge here and doesn't even look like it's even lost a tick mark in the last three or four weeks that I've had this radio. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions about this pretty cool PJ2 Plus Com radio, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get back to you guys and answer any of those questions. If you like this video, please go ahead and click subscribe. If you want more videos of this kind of content, let me know. And if you hate this video, just go ahead and click that thumbs down button twice. We'll see you in the next video.